Hmm. Another thing that I forgot to mention in my <clears throat> Russia video uh, about you know libertarian libertarianism in the Russian psyche and uh, in, in, in the Russian sort of thinking today, one thing that completely amazes me today is this: like in the Soviet Union, there was a very real cult of Lenin. Okay, as a kid, I was taught all sorts of things about Lenin, how Lenin was basically the best human being that ever lived. Um, the most humane man. We used to have, you know, we, we, we had to uh, learn poems by heart and recite poems at our, you know, in class about Lenin. There were portraits of Lenin, sayings about Lenin on the walls of the classrooms and all that. Portraits of Lenin on walls of buildings. Clearly, you know, personality cult, okay? Now, as soon as the Soviet Union disintegrated, all sorts of information came out that was obviously suppressed and was never published or, or made available to the population about what Lenin actually did and said and what kind of man he was, and very quickly the cult of Lenin disintegrated into nothingness. Like, things that he did, things that he said, he, you know, the fact that he ordered the extermination of tens and hundreds of thousands of people, personally ordered their murder, um, what he thought of different classes of people, um, those things became public knowledge, and very quickly there was nothing left. Okay, so the mythology, I guess, well, the state disappeared, so the underlying mythology or uh, the mythology that was servicing that state, the this this ideological, you know, mythological structure of that state, sort of went with it. Okay, today, nobody like like nobody, with the exception of some die-hard uh, mental case communists out there in Russia. There are real mental case communists out there, out there in Russia still, but you know they're certifiable and they're very few. But nobody else has any interest in worshipping Lenin or promoting the cult of Lenin. Well, there is a cult in the United States, a similar cult. I'm talking about the cult of Lincoln, obviously. And the amazing thing, amazing to me, is that uh, in the USSR, you would go to jail even if you knew something bad about Lenin, if you said it out loud, publicizing in any way, you would go to jail. And people have. People did. In the U.S., pretty much never, well, with the exception of, of the time when Lincoln was still alive and he was fighting the war with the South, he would imprison people for, like, news, newspaper editors for printing things against him and his war, and he imprisoned, I think, like, 300 newspaper editors in the North for opposing him and his policies and his war and whatnot. Yeah, that was true. But after the war, especially after he died, like, they didn't imprison people for saying bad things about Lincoln. A. Exhibit A. Exhibit B, there's a lot of information out there about Lincoln. Look, I was just speaking with a friend uh, who was over, you know, visiting with his wife tonight. We were talking about Lincoln, and I said, look, you know, have you read the first inaugural address? Have you read the first inaugural address? He's like, no, I don't know, maybe. It's like, well, okay, you, let's say, effectively, you know, you haven't, okay? Like, my daughter goes to Lincoln School. My son goes to Wilson School, okay? My daughter goes to Lincoln School. Beautiful. <laughs> Just be, I mean, like Every time I see that, I, I crack up. Um, and I see the plate on, on the building, like, Woodrow Wilson Elementary School. Beautiful. Same goes for Lincoln, right? Um, so the information is, is available. Look at the first inaugural address, what he says. And I'm paraphrasing, obviously. I don't remember the exact wording, but... Uh, like, look, guys, we're going to have to collect that tariff, okay? The tariff is sacrosanct. You can't touch the tariff. We will not tolerate any resistance to the collection of tariff. Other than that... There is not going to be any violence and invasion in the use of force. Well, that's a pretty blatant statement, or rather a blatant threat, from where I'm sitting. Like, you will collect the tariff, 
And if you do, there will be no invasion. Like, but if you don't, then obviously, you know, there will be an invasion. There will be use of force. So it's your choice. Hello, this is Lincoln. Oh, oh, and, and Lincoln, who supported, who, who voted for the, the amendment to the Illinois state constitution, uh, banning uh, free blacks from entering the state of Illinois. Lincoln, who supported the American uh, Colonization Society, which effectively, um, you know, was in favor of deporting all blacks to Africa or, or Haiti or some other warm place, uh, anywhere, but out of the United States because you know we don't want to live with these people. And it was Lincoln who said, "Look, you know, my my primary concern is protecting the Union and." If I if I can do that by freeing all slaves, I'll do that. If I can do that, achieve that by keeping them all enslaved, I'll do that. Easy, no problem. Uh, and it was Lincoln who pledged to support the constitutional amendment that would forever stop the federal government from interfering with the southern slavery. And yet, our school, you know, our, our kids are taught in school that Lincoln was this great champion of the freedom of the black population, and he started the war in order to free the slaves and. Uh, and completely overlooked the fact that Lincoln was fighting for the uh, for the financial survival of his northern industrialist Republican backers and for his political career, and he openly threatened the southern states with violence and invasion in case they would decide to resist the tariff policy, which raised the tariff to very close to 50%. Uh, which roughly corresponds to the level of the tariff of, of abominations of late 1820s, where the same South Carolina said, "Fuck you, we're not going to collect that tax." And if any of your, you know, federal agents try to collect the tax in the Charleston Harbor, we're going to arrest their ass and throw them in jail. Have a nice day. And Andrew Jackson said, "Oh, oh, okay, effectively, fine." And the tariff was gone, but Lincoln didn't back down, and there was war. Are our children taught that? No. Our children are taught a very different narrative. And yet the information is available, but nobody, nobody is publicly pursuing that line of inquiry. Almost nobody. Uh, I know there are books out there. There's Tom DiLorenzo. There are other books. There's, uh, the, I forget who wrote the book, uh, Emancipating Slaves and Slaving Free, Free Men, and America Flame, uh, and a couple others maybe. But like, uh, by and large, there is a, 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 a high-functioning cult of Lincoln going on in the United States in the situation where nobody is threatened by imprisonment or any kind of hardship for, for speaking against that political figure. Isn't that kind of interesting? What do you think? I think it's pretty interesting. Like, cult of Lenin is dead. Cult of Lincoln is alive and well. Cult of Lincoln actually has, has been around for longer I would argue that it's deeper, that more deeply ingrained, and it exists, but Lenin's cult is dead. By the way, Lenin's dead body is still in the middle of the Red Square in Moscow. Mummified. Kind of grotesque. Uh, at least they don't have a, a, like a Lincoln mausoleum. Or a Lincoln memorial. So anyway, just, just wanted to share that one thought with you. I think it's an interesting interesting kind of parallel and comparison.